Hi. I'm Emma Tolley. Well, let's find out. A wetland can be many things. There's a lot of different variations, but there is a legal definition. That's right, Emma. And that would be that a wetland is land on which water covers the soil or is at or near the root zone at some point each year. In other words, they're, they're wet. wet! That's a pretty broad definition, though. That's right, Emma. There are many different varieties of wetlands, and these include, according to the EPA, Marshes, swamps, bogs, and fens. Marshes are described as wetlands frequently saturated by water. They generally get their water from surface water, like precipitation. And because of their neutral pH, they have a lot of plant and animal life. Marshes serve an important role in water systems. That's right, Emma. Marshes replenish groundwater and provide water to streams. Unfortunately, marshes have lost a lot of acreage due to human construction and pollution. Without their ecological role being played, downstream water quality declined. They play an important role. We need to respect our wetlands. We need them more than we think. Swamps are next, and their definition is pretty simple. It's any wetland that's dominated by woody plants. Swamps have saturated soil during the growing season and standing water at different points during the year. Swamps have unbelievably high species diversity and are very high in productivity, making them an integral food source to many animals, not just ones that live on the wetlands. Now what's next on our list? That would be bogs. Now bogs are pretty special. They're unlike any other wetland found in North America. They're characterized by spongy peat deposits, acidic water, and a thick carpet of sphagnum moss. Because bogs get almost all their water from runoff, they lack a lot of nutrients and not a lot of plants can grow there. They sure don't let that bog them down though. <laughs> because of their unique conditions, they still prevent downstream flooding by soaking up precipitation, and they're home to a lot of different types of animals that humans have had negative impacts on. Lastly, but not leastly, come fens. Now, fens are also peat wetlands that get most of their water from runoff. They're different from bogs, though. They're less acidic and have more life, both plants and animals. That's right, Emma. Fens prevent downstream flooding and improve water quality. They are unsung staples of so many animals' lives, including humans. Now one thing all wetlands have in common is their soil. Now their soil is classified as hydric. That means that space between grains of soil is filled with water. That means, in other words, they're saturated. Do you know of any wetlands near your house? Awesome, cool. Come with me. As we've learned, wetlands serve an important function and without them, our world wouldn't work very well. Right again, Emma. They prevent flooding by absorbing excess moisture, they improve water quality by being a natural filter, and they replenish groundwater. They also cycle nutrients for the ecosystem, which basically means changing the availability of growth-related chemicals such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Wetlands also protect our beaches from erosion, letting you have a fun beach day with friends. Wetlands also provide countless resources that, like timber that go into making things you use every day. Amazing creatures such as the American crocodile, the blue heron, the platypus, and the outdoorsman. Educate yourself and volunteer with your local nature conservancy efforts. You'll find it's a lot of fun. Look at kids just like you enjoying the wetlands. And thank you for joining us in our adventures of the wetlands. And remember, this is just the beginning. We hope you'll join us next time for more adventures in the nature.